the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to episode 18 of the whole Bible series where we study the Bible from the book of Genesis till the book of Revelation. Today we're going to talk about chapter 20 to 27 from the book of Exodus. We're going to cover the Ten Commandment, the structure of the tabernacle, and we're going to conclude with the holy oil. So let's get started. The Ten Commandments. As you all know that the Ten Commandments were mentioned in two places, the Old Testament. The first is in Exodus 20, and the second is in Deuteronomy chapter 5. These are the commandments that God gave to Moses in the Mount of Sinai. First, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have any strange gods before me. Second, you shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. Third, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Four, keep the Sabbath day of the Lord your God. In it, you shall not do work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter, male or female servant, your cattle or sheep or any stranger who is within your gates. Five, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord God is giving you. Six, you shall not murder. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Ten, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, female servant, or his ox, donkey, or anything that's your neighbor's. These are the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses on the Mount of Sinai. Chapter 21 till 23 are general laws and rules God gave to Moses, so all the Jewish people follow these rules all their life. First, we have to know there was a death penalty, and that was a God punishment for certain important crimes. For example, Anyone who curses his father or mother, anyone who hates his father or mother, anyone who intentionally strikes someone to kill him, anyone who intentionally hates a pregnant woman, anyone who kills his servant. So killing your servant is punishable by death. Any known thrust ox if it kills someone, if someone who offers sacrifice to other gods, anyone who sleep with animal, and any sorcerer or witchcrafter. As he said, do not let sorcerers live. There are some rules regarding the servant. All these rules can be summed in one sentence. No abuse or brutality towards servant. So for example, he said the seven year, all the servant should go free. And also in the 50 years, all the servant, all the slave should let go free. But if one of the servants want to stay in the house because he likes his master and his family and want to stay with them and serve them, the master should take him and pierce his ear, as was mentioned in Psalm 40. If someone enslaves someone else by force, he should be killed. You cannot force someone into slavery. If a master induces injury or permanent damage to the servant and destroy a servant's eye, he is set free. If he knocked out a servant's tooth, he is set free. So if you induce a permanent damage or severe harm to a servant as a fair reward to the servant, he gets his freedom. If a man marries a slave, he must offer her all her needs as a free woman, everything that she needs from food, clothes, and also a relationship. Then we talk about selling of a slave or the price of a slave. And this in Exodus 21, verse 32. If the bull gores a male or female slave, the owner must pay 30 shekels of silver to the master of the slave, and the bull is to be stoned. So if a bull unintentionally kill male or female slave, the bull must be put to this. But the master of this bull, the owner, has to pay 30 shekels of silver to the master of the slave. So the price of a slave was 30 shekels of silver. And this is exactly the price that Judas asked the high priest to get 
in the return for betraying of Jesus, 30 pieces of silver. Chapter 22 talk about equal punishment to avoid over revenge. Because in those days, if someone got hurt, the whole village will stop up against him and his family and destroy them entirely. So God wanna make a fair punishment. So he said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot. And this all has to go through the court or the council of the elders. No one should do it or take it in his own hands. Chapter 22 talk about theft and its punishment. If someone is steal a bull, he has to pay back the price five times. If one steal a lamb, he has to pay back the price four times. If someone steal a donkey, pay it back twice. So as you see here, the return back should be more than the original price. And it varies according to the size of the animal that was stolen. So for the bull is five times, and for the donkey it was two times. And that reminds us of Zacchaeus when he met with Jesus and repented, said, God, if I did harm to anyone, I'm gonna pay him back five times. He also mentioned in chapter 22 that if a thief was found and hit and he's killed, there is no ransom for him. However, if he's hit but still alive, he should make full restitution for the price of the theft that he made. So now we understand that in the Old Testament, theft was not allowed. The thief has to turn back double or four times or five times the price of the original uh, thing that was stolen and that based on the size of the animal. Exodus 22 talk about the curse and should nobody should cursing or revealing God by any means. Anybody curse God, he should be stoned. The same thing for the laurels or the leader of the people. And as you remember, at one time, St. Paul was in trial before the high priest, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he said, I don't know that he was a ruler because it said in the Exodus 22 that don't curse a ruler of your people. Chapter 23 talk about three feasts, all the adult men has to attend before God. And we're gonna talk about them later on. The unleavened bread, first fruit and harvest. And God insists every time they appear, they shouldn't appear empty handed. They should bring gift to God. Three important feasts, unleavened bread, first fruit and the harvest. And the harvest was the 50 days where the Holy Spirit come upon the disciple as tongue of fire. So this was the Pentecost. That's why there were so the thousand and thousand of Jewish people from all over the world that came to attend the harvest feast. Chapter 24 tells us that after Moses wrote all this commandment before the people, he built an altar on 12 pillars and sprinkled the blood of the covenant with God to the people. So the covenant was made with blood and that's why Jesus in the New Testament he said, I'm gonna make a new covenant with you with my blood. So the covenant always was through blood. And the Old Testament was the blood of the animal sacrifice. And the New Testament was the blood of Jesus Christ himself. The people at Moses time, they were so obedient and said, all the Lord has spoken, we will do and will be obedient. Which was a good start as a relationship between God and his people. Right after that, God called Moses to go up to the mountain in the seventh day and he lasted there for 40 days and 40 nights. Those were the days when Moses didn't eat. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, enjoying the presence of God. The same also we see with Elijah. He fasted for 40 days. The same thing with Jesus Christ on the mountain. He fasted for 40 days. This is a picture from the top of Mount of Sinai when God was glorified in this mountain and talked to Moses. The monastery of St. Catherine was built at the bottom of the mountain of Sinai as a special blessing to this place. And a lot of pilgrimage come from all over the world to celebrate and witness this great uh, memory of God appearing on a mountain. Chapter 25 start talking about the tabernacle in details 
uh, and the tabernacle, we have to know the original architect of it was God himself, because he told Moses, according to all that I show you, you have to make the tabernacle. The tabernacle basically was the original design of the church. It divided into three places. The outer court, when you have the bronze altar and the basin or the lever, then the holy place, then the most holy or the holy of the holies. So same thing in our church, we divided into three important or three big uh, areas or locations. This inside view from the tabernacle, from inside the altar. On the right side, you see the table of the showbread. And the left side, you see the lamp stand, then the altar of incense, the veil, and the holy of the holies, or the most holy place, when you have the Ark of God or the Ark of Covenant. And we're going to go through them in details. We'll start by the Ark. This is the most important structure in the tabernacle. In chapter 25, Exodus 25, it was like a square made of wood and covered by gold from inside and outside. The dimension was two and a half by one and a half by half cubit. And the painted with gold from inside and outside. They have two rods on the side because nobody is allowed to touch the box itself in it. Uh, God asked Moses to put the Ten Commandments as a memory for covenant between people and God. Then he had the cover, again cover made of wood that uh, covered with gold from inside and outside. Then the mercy seat, which is basically uh, two cherubim with their wings facing one another and looking down at the ark. From the mercy seat, the throne of God God uh, used to appear to Moses and all the priests as a light, as a true strong light that was called the mercy seat or the throne of God. If we take a quick look at the tabernacle, it's content, it's amazing, it could look like a cross. So in the far part, you see the ark that represents the presence of God, then the altar of incense, on the right side, you see the uh, lamp stand. On the left side, you see the show bread, table of the show bread, then the basin or the washing place, then the altar of the bronze sacrifices. And here is the gate. So basically, if you look at the tabernacle from top, you take a panorama view, you're going to see a cross. And that's what God meant that through cross, the Jewish people or his own people going to cross through the world, through the desired world, through Mount of Sinai, till they make it to the promised land. Another picture for the Ark of Covenant. Besides the uh, two tablets, there was also the Aaron rod and the pot of manda that will later on will be uh, put in in the ark as a memory for important event that happened with the Jewish people. The table of showbread is basically a table of a fine type of wood covered by gold from inside and outside, has uh, rods on the side because no one is allowed to touch it, and it has 12 loaves of bread. They stay there for a whole week. Nobody should touch them. And in the end of the week, the priest should eat this holy bread in a holy place. There were symbols of the sacrifice that every tribe offered before God. And God looked to them as a sign of his mercy and greatness for them. Of course, in the New Testament, the showbread is basically with a symbol of the communion, the body of Christ. Then we have the lamp stand. It was made of six branches and one stem. So it has a light in them as seven. As you all know, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the church considers the light to us. And we as believers should also be the light of the world. Uh, spiritually talking, the seven branches of the lampstand are a symbol of the seven sacrament of the church. That through which we have enlightenment and we have a spiritual vision of the heavenly sacrament. 
Then the altar of incense of gold, it was made out of one by one by two cubit. Again, fine wood covered by gold inside and outside and has the two uh, poles on the side. But uh, this altar has four horns on the four corners. And this horn, uh, the high priest will go inside and sprinkle blood of one specific sacrifice at one occasion in the atonement day. And I'm gonna talk about this later on when we get to the part of the animal sacrifices. Then the veil, as you see, the veil separate between the most holy and the holy place, and the altar of incense was in front of the veil. So the priest used to go offer incense every morning before this altar as if he's facing God. However, he doesn't have a clear vision of the most holy because the veil separate between him and the most holy. Now, as you all know, Jesus on the cross, the veil of the temple was torn down from top to bottom, which means God himself torn that veil and allow us to go into the most holy place, the altar, when we share the heavenly sacrament uh, of communion, body and the blood of Jesus Christ. The tabernacle from outside was basically a big uh, tent that has four covering. The outer layer is badger skin, then ram skin, goat skin, and fine linen. And if you look from outside, you see the badger skin look very dark and rusty, uh, non-appealing color. But while the most inner layer was basically a white fine linen as a symbol of the purity and uh, righteousness of the people who are worshiping God. The tabernacle was built from 20 bars, 20 wooden bars on each side and eight bars on the back side. And across there was five crossbar to hold them together. This is the acacia wood or the acacia wood when used to make the tabernacle. The tabernacle will has a gate and we'll talk about it later. Covered by four layers badger skin, ram skin, goat hair, and fine linen. Chapter 26 in the book of Exodus talk about the uh, covering, the outer covering of the tabernacle. So the first layer was made from fine linen, basically thin curtain. And this curtain are five in each side and they have 50 loops and 50 golden clasps. So five curtain in each side and both of them has 50 loops and 50 golden clasps. So the number of 50, the two uh, sides of the curtain unite together. This is a symbol of the 50 days when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciple and united the Christian from the original Jewish nature and those who are not Jewish. The same way we have 10 curtain, five in each side are united together through number 50. The second layer was the goat skin that was 11 curtain, again with the 50 loop and 50 bronze clasp. This is, was longer, who is supposed to cover the tabernacle and reach to the end. Inside the tabernacle was the veil that separated between the holy and the most holy. And this basically has four colors. The colors of the veil were uh, a test of Jesus Christ, was symbol of Jesus Christ. Every color will has a meaning. It was made of white color, a symbol of his pure humanity, a blue color, a symbol of his divinity, a purple color, a symbol of his royal ship, and a scarlet or red color, a symbol of his bloody sacrifice. And as you will know that the veil was built on four poles. These are the four gospel. So now if we look at the four gospel, these are basically the four poles that carry the veil that show us Jesus Christ. God asked Moses to have the cherubim drawn on the veil and separate between the most holy and the holy. And he insisted in the cherubim because as you all know that when God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden, he placed two cherubim at the gates of the garden. So they are not allowed to go back to meet with God in the Garden of Eden. So now the cherubim on the veil was symbol of those cherubim 
who stood at the gates of the Garden of Eden, prohibiting us as human at that time from going back to meet with God. There was a separation between human and God after Adam's sin. The outer court was basically the outer space. It was 100 by 50 by 5 cubit. And it has two important structures. The first was the bronze uh, altar, or the altar of bloody sacrifice. And the second was the basin, or the labor. So the bronze altar was discussed in chapter 27. Again, it was made out of wood, but covered by bronze from in and out. Again, has a pole from both sides so they can carry it. And it has a, a sieve on the top. So the animals, when they are burned, their ashes will fall down and their blood will be uh, poured around the sides of uh, the altar. The altar has horns. So whoever ran away and tried to hold on to the uh, horn of the altar uh, can be granted life. That was uh, especially granted to those who kill unintentionally. Those who uh, get in a case of unintention, uh, a non-premeditated murder, they can hold on to the horns of the altar and the high priest will give him or the king will give him their freedom. The second structure basically was the laver or the basin, which was a big pot filled with water when the priests used to wash their hand and their feet before they go into the tabernacle. This was symbol of the baptism that through which we are allowed to join the saints in the church. Finally, he talked about a, a ransom for census. And any time a king will order people to make a census, everyone has to pay half shekel and this money will go to the uh, temple. So God said from 20 years and up, you have to pay half shekel of silver. Otherwise a plague from God will come upon the people and destroy the people. And as we know, uh, at the end of uh, uh, the second Kings, there was a story about King David when his heart was full of pride and he tried to count the people. And uh, his commander and the priest tried to warn him, said this is again his God command because he mentioned to Moses that has to only be done by God order and they have to be uh, money paid to the uh, temple, but he refused. And because of that, a plague came upon the people and killed thousands of them. Uh, we conclude by the holy oil, and this was a special type of oil that God asked uh, the prophet of the Old Testament to anoint certain people, to anoint the prophet, the priest, and the king with this holy oil. And of course, as you know, the holy oil was symbol of the Holy Spirit. And we have the holy myron in the church that has almost the same ingredient as the holy oil in the Old Testament. Uh, God asked him to uh, gather 500 shekel of liquid mare, 500 shekel of cassia, 250 of cinnamon, 250 of sweet cane, hint of olive oil, mix them all together. And this is going to be the holy oil that you anoint kings and prophets and priests. By this holy oil, they anointed Aaron and his son as priest, Saul and uh, David as king, and all the other prophets. I think that will conclude our talk for today. We cover uh, chapter 20 through 27 from Book of Exodus. I have to see you next week and thank you for your attendance.